Hey guys, welcome to the show. In this episode, we're going to be doing both testing and a restoration on this cast iron pan. Before we do anything, let me show you what we have uh, to start with here. So obviously it's a completely rusty pan. It looks like it's been sitting outside for quite a while. Uh, the bottom looks relatively flat, but it, it has this ring around it, which does not work with my cooktop. So I'm going to have to remove that. Now the main problem is this large crack here. But I'm not going to fix that in this video. I'm simply going to prep this and I'm going to use it for testing. In a previous video, I showed a restoration of a cast iron pan and that was the first I had done. And since that video, I've learned there's much better ways to remove rust from these uh, using a lot less grinding equipment. And so I'm going to show that, that process here right now quick. So I'm going to use Evaporust here. Now I'm not affiliated with this company at all. I just purchased this because I really enjoy using it as opposed to grinding and loading a lot of dust into the air. Now when this is done removing the rust here, uh, you can reuse it. So I'm not throwing all this away. This will be reused again and again as much as I possibly can. I'll bring this in the house where it's warm and leave it for 24 hours and come back and see how it did. About 24 hours has passed now. Now I found this uh, heat mat, this is for germinating plants. And if you have something like this, it should speed up the process a little bit. It raises the temperature about five degrees Celsius uh, higher than what it would normally be. So the sidewalls on here and the bottom seem to be fairly thin. Uh, no manufacturer that I can identify on here. That might be because it's an older pan. Uh, not really sure to be honest with you. There are some casting voids in here as well. So it leads me to believe that maybe this is a pretty low quality pan. So next step I'm going to do is take this inside, I'm going to clean it off with soap and water completely and dry it immediately so it does not flash rust. And just one disclaimer here, this evaporust process is not intended for cast iron cookware. Uh, I'm using it because it does a really good job with it. But if you're going to be eating off of it, you have to make sure that you're going to be doing a really thorough cleaning job and there is no remnants of that product left on the cast iron. So I definitely cannot um, recommend that you use this process for cookware. You can do this if you want at your own risk. I had planned on removing this ring here. I changed my mind because I saw the result of what the Evaporus did with this and I thought actually it looks pretty good so I really don't want to mess with it and I'm going to leave that ring and I'm going to use this burner instead for all the testing that I'm going to do. So we will quarantine off the pie shape for each test area, and there'll be five of them. We're getting to the real point of this, uh, this video now, which is the testing. And I'd already done a previous video where I took it to the extreme and I polished these two areas. Now, it doesn't look like the seasoning bonded too well to that area, so I definitely do not want to do that again. The purpose of this video is to dial it in and find out what is the best grit if you're going to prep in this way. What is the best way to prep? Natural. And this one here is something special that I've never tried before and I don't think I've seen it anywhere before as well. 
So stick around for the rest of the video to find out what this one's going to be. It's going to be pretty cool. One thing I'm seeing is there's a really deep pitting in here, more than what I could tell from before. I'm not going to be able to get all that pitting out, so we'll just have to rely on the majority of it being sanded to the various grits that we've chosen here. In a previous video, I built this hand scraper. That's for machinery. If you're not familiar with that, here's an example of the kind of finish that you can obtain with it. Now the purpose of this hand scraper is to flatten uh, two surfaces completely that mate to each other. It lowers the friction between the two surfaces so they only touch on certain points and it allows a place for oil to sit to provide constant lubrication on those parts as well. So that prevents wear. So I've put a colorant on here, with the, which is shellac, a little bit of leather dye and some alcohol. It dries really quickly. It's more or less like a layout fluid, except uh, low budget. With all this preparation done, it's now time to do the seasoning. And I'll be following the Stargazer seasoning guide because uh, it's the one that makes the most sense to me. I will put a link in the description if you're interested. Um, and we'll come back after applying the seasoning and review the results of that seasoning on the pan. The seasoning has set and a total of three coats have been applied. Let's take a look at the results of each of the areas we prepared and the overall results as well. Now before we do, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like the video if you enjoy this type of content. Now this is taken out of the barbecue. No oil has been added to the surface. This is just as it has come out after cooling. Let me zoom you in on each of these finishes here and you can see the results for yourself. Temperature of cooking definitely plays a big role in whether something is non-stick or not. So I'm going to try and get the heat up a little bit higher on here, around 200 Celsius, and a fairly even heat distribution as well. The first test we're going to do here is a little bit crazy. It involves no oil whatsoever. At this point, I've only cleaned this pan with soap and water. Uh, nothing after the seasoning process has been added to this pan. 
So I think that's going to identify which area is going to be the best performer compared to the others. That's the one I'd like to do first, because as soon as I add any sort of oil, I'm going to have to try and remove that oil to replicate this test. So as I remove the egg from this pan, you'll notice that around the perimeter where the temperature was lower, that there was uh, more sticking of the egg to the surface. And I've noticed that in some other testing as well. It seems a lower surface temperature, like around 100 Celsius to 115, will promote more sticking. Whereas if you're up at 150 to 200, you'll see less of that uh, occurring. The next test we're performing here is a light coating of oil, which is canola oil in this case. And we'll be applying it to the surface and then removing as much as possible with a paper towel. Now that coating will be applied to the bottom and the side walls. With the results of the light oil, I'm not really seeing much of a difference here between each surface finish. They seem to all perform really well as far as the nonstick properties. Well, it may seem redundant, but I'm going to go ahead and complete our testing with the lots of oil test. And again, this is canola oil that we're pouring on here. Before we get to the results, I just wanted to talk briefly about this large crack here. Now I didn't purchase this pan, it was given to me, it was going to be tossed away. Uh, so I don't really have any intentions of fixing this crack. I just wanted to use this pan for testing to see how it would perform and how a restoration would work with the evaporust and how it would season. So if you, uh, if you have some thoughts on how to properly repair this, then definitely put it in the comment section below. But I don't have intentions and I don't even think I have the equipment of fixing it properly um, so it may just stay as is if there's any conclusion that I've come to it is that any of these surface finishes performed very well um, that is with the addition of oil without oil the rough surface tended to hold on to a little bit more of the egg material but of course that's not a reasonable test because that's not something you would do in everyday life with oil they all seem to perform very well now that may have something to do with the preparation and the seasoning method that I used. Uh, I've not been as successful in the past with my seasoning until I use the stargazer method, so I can definitely recommend that. Now I'm interested in your guys' opinions of my testing methods, so if you have comments on that, make sure that you put some comments in the section below. If you'd like me to do further testing, let me know in the comments as well. Uh, and what do you think from your perspective are the most critical factors in creating a nonstick pan? Is it the seasoning, the amount of oil, or is it the temperature, or something else? And also, if you have ideas for cast iron related testing videos that you'd like me to do, please let me know. And as I use this pan, I'll be providing updates in the description section. That's all for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.